All right, everyone, here we are with another video with Invest for tomorrow. And to all the first time viewers and investors, welcome to the channel. And to all the subscribers, welcome back. Before we jump into this chart, I just want to go ahead and quickly announce to everyone because this is something that I have been emphasizing, but a lot of new time investors or first time viewers are coming across the channel. And yes, you're looking for the chart analysis, but this is what happens in a lot of the videos. And you guys are leaving money on the table, guys. This second half of the video is where the money's at. I've done it endless times with Pendul Duo sitting at 124, ran up to 147 in just five days, charge point at $19, and in just few days, it ran up to 32, and skills at 14, 15, and then we talked about it again at 12. I wanted to emphasize it, and it ran up 19 plus, right? So we've done it countless times. Now, not every single time I talk about a stock towards the end of the video, means that it's guaranteed to go up but i share with you guys new opportunities and this is where the money's at yes you're here for the chart analysis i get it i can't blame you i understand you if i was watching a video myself or watching my, one of my own videos i'm just looking for the chart analysis i only care about the stocks i'm invested in and move on i get it but in this channel i make chart analysis out of gratitude and i add on towards the second half of the video new opportunities and this is where the money's at. Now, not only do I talk about the ticker symbol you want to add to your watch list, but I also discuss, as you see on the screen, the ticker symbols I mention over in the morning over at the Discord, guys. Every single morning, I mention the stocks I'm watching. And if that's something that interests you, the link to the Discord is down below. Slots are filling up pretty quickly. And we have a community of 100 plus members already, all looking to learn and grow together. Smart, intelligent investors, all focusing on the same goal to maximize profits and minimize losses. And if that's something that you're interested in and you want to become a part of, as you can see on the screen, the different opportunities that have presented themselves in the last several weeks, you're more than welcome to join us and we look forward to having you join us. Let's jump into this chart and stay tuned on in. All I'm asking for is three to five more minutes of your time right after this chart analysis to talk about the stocks I mentioned in the morning, as well as the ticker symbol you want to add to your watch list. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about why in the vaccine sector or overall vaccine companies that can come to mind have been hit pretty hard after some statements that were made yesterday. And then there's other variables not really being said, but you kind of want to read between the lines and especially in the moments that we're in now. So it's not really any technicals. We're just going to get right into it. And before we do, I want you guys to be aware right after this. In the second half of the video, all I ask for is three to five more minutes of your time. And I'm going to talk to you guys about the stocks I mentioned this morning, how they reacted. And I was watching over at the Discord. And you'll also know a ticker symbol that you may already have on your watch list or you don't. And you may not want to miss it because this stock has potential moving forward. So stay tuned on in for that. And we've hit home runs with this one. 10 to 20% swing trade opportunities every single time it touches near twenty dollars it's not guaranteed to happen again but it is something to watch so the first one i have here on the screen is mrna okay fell from 176 all the way to a low here of 143 that's a big collapse guys big big collapse now i jump back up and that's just the way sometimes stocks work but that's still a big collapse let's go ahead and look at vaxart and vaxart was part of these candidates as well it's been falling for the last several days and yesterday it fell from 826 to a low here of 630 okay that's another one another one we have here is oxygen this is taking a beating and this has so many other variables and not just this company but all of them have other variables behind them but the big drops from yesterday to today and continuing the drops there's some other variables that link them all together indirectly and directly okay now Another one too is Pfizer. Now Pfizer has been holding up pretty well because Pfizer is not really just known for vaccines, but man, was that a drop? I mean, that hit $41 and it dropped down to 37. I mean, look at that. Okay. But they're not just known for vaccines. They're more than that. Same thing with MRNA and Johnson and Johnson. These stocks, yes, they've ran because of the vaccine possibilities, but not only that, like They've been growing because of other reasons within their portfolio of innovations. Now, INO, which is a little bit harder here to find, 
but it's Inovio right here, Pharmaceuticals, is another one that has fallen and collapsed. Now, this one collapsed before this announcement, and it just made it even worse, okay? This stock had good news one day, which was back here, that there was a possibility of 100% efficiency. I guess something did not go through or go well for them, and it fell, and it's continued to fall because of the same statement that's affected all of them. So the first thing I want to say is we're turning into from pandemic, right, into post-pandemic almost. We're, we're in the works of that. The U.S. market in the world, number one. Number two, we're reopening, right? And some of these are U.S. market companies, okay? Once we reopen, there's nothing so special about them anymore, right? They've already done the run that they were anticipated to do. I'm not saying they can't run again because of future vaccine, you know, revenues or anything like that. That's different. But right now in this very moment, that's one of the first variables affecting it. The second thing is, as we go back to norm, you know, these vaccines will no longer be so special, quote unquote. And after the statements that were made by the World Health Organization and the administration in the U.S. yesterday, it has changed everything from making these companies profitable and something that I want you to be aware of that makes stocks go up, right? Like you can see here in Pfizer going up is the anticipation of future revenues and profits. Same thing here with Ocugen, same thing here with Vaxart, same thing here with mRNA and same thing with any stock overall. But this is what changed everything and this is what has made the whole entire vaccine sector become equal or no longer so unique, right? And it's this, okay? And this is the reason why they're doing it. And I just want to read it. And then I'm going to read to you guys the headings. So it says, it's not the case where rich countries would insulate themselves by vaccinating the entire population and not care about what happens with the rest of the world, okay? Very, very important when they stated that. Then they said, we now have variants and these variants come about because of the transmission of the virus among millions of people. So they're saying, you know, rich countries get vaccinated, control everything, and then the rest of the world is gonna continue to go ahead. And, and this sounds like an activist actually, or like post, this is like attacking these companies because you could see it here, how they're writing to the point where they say like Morena and Pfizer, uh, went ahead and also received billions in public funding to develop the vaccines and have already made huge profits. Like they want to take the profits away. They want to take the uniqueness of making these right after they work so hard to make them. And there's something that's going to affect not just the company, but the shareholders themselves. And we're already seeing it now. Could the drop last? I'm not sure. Could it come back up? I'm really not sure. I'm not here to tell you guys to buy, sell, or hold or anything like that. But I am here to show you guys the biggest reason why it's affecting these companies. And they're basically saying that, you know, there's variants out there. And we want to control this worldwide, not just in the rich countries. Because then we have not solved the issue. And it's because the U.S. wants to back the waiver on the coronavirus vaccine patents, guys. This takes away the point of Pfizer becoming more profitable on the vaccine, Johnson & Johnson, mRNA, right? Occugen's opportunity with Covaxin, Vaxart, INO, and they're basically saying that the vaccine is being in captivation, right? And, and incubated, and they need to let it free and let everyone have access to it. And, you know, it, it kind of is hard not just as an investor's perspective, but let's say you are Johnson & Johnson or Pfizer and you worked hard all year, right, to get this going. Well, then maybe instead of saying free the vaccine, bring the prices down a little bit, okay? Don't be a monopoly, okay? But just giving away all your hard work, it is kind of hard for these companies. And that's what's affecting these companies' total amount of revenue, and profitability and that's affecting the share price and that is affecting the shareholders so this is something to watch it's not official yet i'm not sure 
unless it already has been or it's in the works. And if it goes through, there's nothing special about any vaccine companies moving forward. So something to think about, food for thought. Comment your thoughts down below and how you feel about this. And as always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's make some money. And all I'm asking for is three to five more minutes of your time to go ahead and share with you guys the ticker symbol you want to add to your watch list, as well as the ticker symbols I mentioned this morning over at the Discord. Stay tuned. So the ticker symbol I have for us today is one that I've talked about multiple times. And every single time it touches $20, it gets more interesting. But for the first time, it's hit below $20. And this is becoming more interesting than ever. I've said it before, but it's definitely one to have on your watch list moving forward. And every single time it's hit $20, it jumps back up, giving 10 to 20% swing trade opportunities. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that's going to happen again, but this is the time to watch this one closely. But before we jump into that, I want to share with you guys the stocks I mentioned this morning over at the Discord. And if it's something that interests you, you're more than welcome to join us. We're 100 plus members already over at the Discord, all looking to learn and grow together. Great, smart, intelligent investors in the community. And that's something you can become part of as well. And we look forward to having you join us. So AMS, I talked about it in the morning. It was currently sitting at 445. And by the way, when I mention stocks, it does not mean that's an entry or an exit. It's not financial advice or anything of that sort. It's just me sharing my opinions and stocks that I'm watching. Now, just because I'm watching it doesn't mean it's something to react upon right away or to react upon at all, right? So for the first time, we've actually had two stocks in the same day fall, but both of them have been opportunities because it's not about where you start watching it. It's all about how long do you stay watching it and where do you find the opportunity? The opportunities are there. They never leave. The moment you start watching a stock, the opportunity is there. But sometimes it takes patience, it takes time, and you got to have your indicators and the charts speaking to you through the movement. So let's look at this. So AMS needed more volume in the morning. TRVN had a lot of volume, and what happened? It pulled back, hit 170, and it jumped back up to about 178. So this didn't give much other than a, just about... I'd say 5%, like 3 to 5% on the day. This was a realistic expectation move after it dipped and came back up. Now, Apple, I talked about an option play that I did. This was a home run for the day. It gave 20% profit when I bought it at 0 0.08, excuse me, 80, and I sold it at 0.97. So that was the 128 put expiring tomorrow. So this was very risky. And this is something I didn't want anyone to act upon, if not just watch. And even though I sold at 0.97, I even said it, the stock may go lower, but profits are profits. And just a few moments after, this turned into 1.17, okay? So I missed out on another 20%, if I'm quite honest with you guys. But I'm all about executing and profits are profits, and that's what it's all about. So AMS. AMS actually collapsed after me stating in the morning. This is the perfect example of not expecting right away instant gratification. And when you start watching a stock, you really want to watch it and you want to look for weakness or a floor. No one knows it, right? And most of the time, the stocks I'm watching, they don't collapse like this. They don't. Usually they have a pullback. They show some strength and take off. But what happened was there was not enough volume. I emphasized it. So a lot of the volume that was showing up was outflow. And you can see that here by the bars. Okay, very little green bars. But something that's interesting is if you really watch a stock and you really want to look for opportunity, it takes time sometimes. And the confirmation is here. Hit a low of 311 and then it hit up to 317, 319 and then 322. So within 320 range, right, or let's just say 325 all the way down to 310, that was a range of opportunity, okay? And it was looking like it was a floor every single time between these two and these two. And look what happened after, okay? Did I know that was going to happen? No. Did any other investor know that was going to happen? No. But when you start watching a stock, even throughout this discouraging weakness, you need to watch it 
because the opportunity is about to come. Whether it came here, it came here, or it came here, it was bound to give back at least 5 to 10%. But you had to watch it. That's why you can't just jump right away. You can't be eager. You have to watch and see. Now, not every single time stocks are just going to collapse. Sometimes they move very fast, pulls back down here to 391, and jumps back up to 419, consolidates, and then jumps up again. That happens a lot of times. So it's always about not having fear of missing out and then also timing yourself and understanding where the weakness is. But early on, since I mentioned it around 445 here, it jumped up to 491. This gave about 10 to 15% right away. But if you didn't play in the pre-market, the opportunity was missed. Then it fell down, hit a low here of 391 and jumped up to 419. That was another 5% opportunity. But where the home run happened, even though I'm not going to call this a home run, was here after the big collapse. And then once the confirmation happened several times, anyone that's prepared and equipped, like I always say, this is my opinion, I watch for weakness, I buy in, and the risk of trying is putting a stop limit loss or a stop loss, whichever one you're more comfortable with, and then letting it trigger. If it touches it, call it a day. At least you tried and if it doesn't get touched, ride that one up to your 5 to 10%, 10 to 20%, and whatever it is that you're trying to aim to, to do. So this is what happened today. Perfect realistic expectations of how the market really works. No one's perfect, but opportunities are always there. So let's talk about the ticker symbol you want to add to your watch list. And if you want to become part of this community of growing and learning investors, we're 100 plus members check out the link down below in the description to the discord so let's talk about this which one do you want to add to your watch list you may have it already it may not and as i'm talking the stock has been running wow so this stock has never been below 20 dollars since last year guys okay and here we are seeing it hit a low of 1941 and as I'm talking, this was actually at $19 and already got back into $20. This is a stock you want to watch. I would not rush into making a decision with this stock, me, personal opinion. But I would do research on the stock, understand more of what's going on. They have partnered up with so many big companies to the point that they're with IBM and many others, okay, that everyone's talked about. And this has to do with a sector that is growing and a lot of analysis ratings and investors are saying this is a multi-billion if not trillion dollar company and right now it's sitting at a market cap of 37 billion so you can think about the room this stock has to grow in market cap and price so definitely watch this one either for consolidation or a healthy pullback because this below 20 dollars is very rare and as I was talking, it's been running back up. So very interesting. As always, guys, if you found this video helpful and informative, please do so and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. And let's make some money.